Live from the Fairmont Hotel in San Jose, California, it's The Cube at Big Data SV 2015. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley for the last day of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of theCUBE. Uh, Big Data SVR event, uh, Big Data Silicon Valley in conjunction with Strata Conference and Hadoop World. Um, we're theCUBE, we got here to extract the signal from the noise. And I'm John Furrier with Silicon Valley. Our next guest is Rod Kleeman, who's the Director of Business Strategy at Red Hat. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks John. The, um, the Red Hat Summit last year was very interesting because we actually interviewed the, the CEO of Docker at the time, before, no, actually the founder of Docker before they changed their name, I think it was. But now Docker's been the rage. OpenStack's been amazing. Um, you guys have been leaders in that. Big data's happening. Um, what's going on with, with you guys here at the show and, and what are you guys announcing? What's going on? What's some of the activities? Share with the folks your, your, uh, your presence here at SV. Yeah, sure. So I guess I'll start where you, you mentioned on OpenStack, right? So we, we've heard a lot about the cloud. Um, I think everyone has. I was uh, found the Salesforce uh, keynote very interesting. Uh, and everyone was here, right? Uh, Microsoft's here, Google's here. Um, and so a lot of activity on the public cloud side, but also on the private cloud side. So just uh, earlier this week, Red Hat uh, shipped the Red Hat OpenStack platform version six, which includes Sahara which is kind of the infrastructure that allows customers to build effectively their own yeah. Elastic MapReduce uh, inside their cloud. So we're seeing a lot of interest in that now that it's out and available. Uh, we've talked about it on theCUBE before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's very exciting. And you know, we're going to be in um, Vancouver this year, so we're definitely, oh. definitely going to be up there, CUBE, again, to continue the coverage. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, go ahead. Oh, no, that's yeah, okay. We, so love the, we love those summits, they're really awesome. Yeah, yeah, so the OpenStack community is uh, you know, coming together and starting to embrace the big data uh, as a workload. Uh, I think Sahara will go a long way to help in that. And then, you know, the other thing is, uh, I think, a lot, you know, continue to hear lots about real time, continue to hear lots about analytics, and you know, basically people want to get value out of the data, so it's all about the analytics. Uh, and so in that area, we've got a couple things. One is um, uh, we had announced a partnership with uh, Continuum, which is uh, one of the biggest players in the Python space, uh, Continuum Analytics. And so we have a, uh, as customers are looking from scale out to scale, or from scale up to scale out, in terms of their Python uh, implementations. Uh, they need an infrastructure to put that on. Uh, so they've, uh, they just announced Anaconda, which is sort of their cluster management product. And then we put in a connector and, and uh, verified that on top of Red Hat Storage uh, Gluster. And so we, uh, we announced that, uh, and that's uh, up on our blog post as well as uh, some sample code. Uh, and then obviously whenever you're doing real-time analytics yeah. and trying to get value out of your data, you want to get all your data sources together. Uh, so we also announced a new uh, Impala connector uh, for Cloudera Enterprise for our JBoss data virtualization product, which allows customers to pull data out of, um, out of Cloudera through Impala and combine it with non-Hadoop data sources so they can do their analytics at a higher level. So let's take a step back, because I really want, I love, I love talking with, uh, with you guys. Red Hat's one of my favorite companies. I've been following you guys from Gen 1 when, when open source was, when you guys really came onto the scene. By the way, as not a tier one op um, op offering in the enterprise, now you're tier one. Open source has exploded. Look at where we're living in an era of amazing open source goodness. I mean, it's really fantastic. If, if you've been a developer and you, you, you've seen where it's come from, yeah. it's super, right? So it's great. You guys are so awesome in open source. Um, what do you think about the open source situation right now? You've got so many good things happening. Mm -hmm. Um, I was asked to comment on the open data platform that, that Pivotal announced with Hortonworks and a variety of other players, some big names, and you know, I, I usually would be a naysayer because consortiums tend to not you know, get, get under my skin a little bit, but mm -hmm. I was critical of OpenStack when it became kind of a marketing fluff thing and then they tweaked their you know, the, the mandate, ship with code, yep. let your code do the talking, and then all of a sudden, boom, OpenStack's successful. Yep. Cloud Foundry, I was very skeptical on when this came out. There's no way it's ever going to happen. Mm -hmm. But you know, they've cobbled together a little foundation. It's working. It's generating revenue. So I'm going to reserve my judgment on this one because open source is so uh, proliferated now. Is it changing at all? I mean, is it is there a modernization happening in open source that's adding to the goodness of where it's come from? I mean, is there a new dimension if? If the Internet of Things includes machines and code and people, mm -hmm. and it's instrumented in real time, 
doing things in the open is 100% open. Yep. So if it's 100% open, does that change the dynamics of hiding behind the curtain? In the old days, we all know the tricks, you know, hide behind the curtain, lock and spec, yep. you know, market spec. So, so is it different now? Are you seeing any tweaks to this open source model in a good way or bad way or nothing? Is it the same? Is the yeah. <laughs> Can you share your perspective or observations there? Because that's something that we've been talking about all week. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, obviously, you know, we're the purist, right? <laughs> uh, so to us, you know, it's all about showing up with code. Uh, and contributing to the community, and, and you know it's a meritocracy. So the more you the more you w work, the harder you work into it, the more open you are, the better. Uh, so that's like you said. Sort I think of that's the, like I don't think that's pure. I think that's just the way it is. I yeah. mean, code rules, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's the way we look at it. Um, and but as you said, right? There's there's definitely been over the last I don't know uh, five to ten years, sort of this you know this uh, leakage, <laughs> right? There's a lot of companies, they've been successful. Yeah. Uh, they all say they're doing open source. Uh, they don't quite follow that model, you know, the Red Hat model, right? Which is upstream, always first, uh, you know, pull down later, uh, harden it, you know, for the enterprise, that's your value add, not necessarily putting in proprietary hooks. Uh, so, you know, there's, but, you know, as you said, you can't argue with their success. Um, so. Maybe, you know, maybe it is, maybe it's, uh, you know, there's multiple models now, right? There's the purest model, uh, which is the one we sort of live by, uh, but then there's this, you know, happy medium or, or slight, uh, slight adjustment. Well, it's not proven way. yet, so, so again, I'm losing all my judgment. <laughs> Even OpenStack has had some growing pains, but mm -hmm. I mean, people are finding their swim lanes, as Jeff Kelly said, so we'll reserve judgment. Certainly the purest way works, right? But you got to look at that and say, hmm, this open core, dancing around the edge, you know, Hard and top. Where does that go to? But you know, interesting. I want to get your perspectives. We're watching this because you know, one thesis we have is maybe there's a new modern tweak to open source that could take it another level. We don't mm -hmm. know. We're just watching it. So yep. appreciate appreciate your perspective. Um, now back to uh, OpenStack and some of these other opportunities. Um, OpenStack is interesting. So where do you guys see OpenStack intersecting with big data and the data? fabric, the data lakes, the data oceans that are ar around us now. There's a lot of dynamic conditions and data are changing. Real time is a huge focus. Mm -hmm. Analytics are still the game. That's the app side. Yep. And OpenStack is all about infrastructure for developers, right? So right. app developers. So where's this all converging? What's the pressure points that are most active in, op in, in OpenStack mm -hmm. that you guys are involved in? Yep, yep. So, I mean, the, the one easy one is Sahara. Uh, but beyond that, right, if you think about what you just said, the two worlds d sort of colliding, right? You have the analytics guys who just want their answers out of the data, and then you have sort of the, the DevOps and the operations teams that have to deliver that. Uh, and as you said, as you move more to real time and you move more to sort of agile data, you really need, and the fact that the data sets are getting so big, um, and it's a polyglot world, right, where you have to support multiple languages. Um, to us, the logical answer to that is some type of a scale-out infrastructure that's very easy to manage uh, and very sort of DevOps friendly. Yeah. Uh, and that's pretty much the description of OpenStack, uh, yeah. right? It's, it's a scale-out, very oriented on, the, on a development ops sort of a perspective, uh, very easy to manage, meant to scale out, meant to handle big data sets, meant to handle multiple workloads, accessing those different data sets. Um, and be able to scale out um, w as the demand goes and be able to sort of elastically do it, right? Yeah, Just yeah. everybody, it's sort of elasticity is an assumption in the big data world. Yeah. Um, and so that's, to us, that's a perfect storm. That's exactly what OpenStack is designed to do. So we think that, and if you add into all of that, uh, the fact that the vast majority of businesses, right, it's their data. It's, they're trying to monetize it. They're trying to get value out of it. They're not going to want it outside their firewall. Uh, that's yeah. sort of a perfect storm in our mind for OpenStack. And you think about OpenStack, what I like about OpenStack right now, remember the old OSI model of the you know, seven layers of the stack? You know, the first two had to get done first, right? And then, uh, you know, the TCP IP came up on top on that. So that's kind of really cool. So I see OpenStack really nailing that at the, at the I won't say bottom of the stack, but like that enablement, that infrastructure piece is really mm -hmm. critical. Um, are you happy where it's at in terms of the progress? I mean, I think generally people are like pretty happy with that right now. And then where's the work areas that you see um, uh, the community really having to focus on. Mm -hmm. If you had to kind of say, okay, these are the areas to work on. Yeah, so I think you characterize it well, right? The, the things that are getting very solid is the ba is the foundation, right? So it's the compute, it's the storage, it's the networking. Those are all starting to get stable and those are our fundamental building blocks. The next sort of thing we got to do now is to make all the orchestration work, 
uh, make the provisioning work, make the, the dynamic uh, uh, deployment work. Uh, that's non-trivial when you're yeah. talking about, but, but you, you can't do that until you get yeah. the basics done, as you said, yeah. right? So I think we're past the basics and now we're approaching that, now we're into the mix in terms of getting the deployment and the provisioning part all working nice and smooth. Uh, and then the next one is gonna be the workloads, right? Things like schedulers and all that is gonna have to come in uh, and to basically take that workload, combine it with the provisioning of the infrastructure. Uh, and so those, that's where the heavy lifting is right now. That's where a lot of the attention is. So what do you think about the open data platform um, announcement? Um, what's your personal take on it? I mean, I've read how you're a purist, so let me mm -hmm. take a personal perspective on that as a company perspective. Um, do you think it's going to work? Do you think it has legs? Do you think it's full of smoke, hot air? What's your... What's yeah, so we, it's very much the way you mentioned it before, right? We're, we're the purists, so to us it should be more about who shows up with the most code. Um, and it's also about um, being open to everybody, right? In order to really do, so we agree 100% with the goal of the ODP. Um, that's you know, the same goal we have, right? Yeah. Which is, hey, let's get a common base, let's all work on the same common base, and let's go build on top of that. Um, it's the, but you, in order to make that successful, you know, to us it's the how that's different, right? Yeah. We would like to see all the code in the open, um, no, you know, no one, no one group or one company controls that. Yeah. Uh, it's truly open. Everyone can contribute, um, and then you know you, you follow a process uh, where it's an inclusion, yeah. right? You include everybody. You don't exclude anybody. Uh, and in order That's to be successful, a, that is a real critical piece. That inclusion, not excluding, is to me the number one criteria for success because that's truly in the open. I mean, that's our philosophy. We're, mm -hmm. we're all about open, not closed. Right. We have some, we disagree with many people about their business models in the media business. If you want to be closed and not include people, that's a choice. It's like religion, whatever you want to do, you pick it. But yeah. if you're closed, a walled garden, yep. not inclusive. So that's our philosophy. But again, if it's not done in the open, right. you got to be, got to be open. So now the measurement with social media, you can't, People know what you had for breakfast before you leave your house. I mean, people, I mean, so it's all out there now. So yeah. like, compare and contrast what that does for the transparency. You know, when you go back 15, 20 years, oh, IRC had back channel stuff going on, but still, now out in the open. Has that changed the game in open source? In your mind, dynamics? Yeah, in yeah. Social media? Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Like you said, you know, it's, it's more, every, everybody knows everything now. And so there, there's really no secrets. And, and then when you do try to have those closed door meetings, right? Uh, They're live they, tweeted. <laughs> that's right. They get tweeted before the meeting's over, right? <laughs> um, and so the, you know, the open data platform is a good example, right? That, that was leaking out there a couple weeks ago. Um, and so you, you kind of can't do much behind yeah. the, the closed doors you anymore. You just might as well tell what your affiliation is. Right. <laughs> yeah. and, and more importantly, to your point, right? It, it, you you want to be inclusive. You want to include everybody. Yeah. So what's the point of that, right? You're not really going to you're not going to be able to control it because everyone's going to know what you're doing anyways, so why not invite everybody in, right? And if you're going to invite everybody in, then there's, a, there's already a business model for that. It's called open source, yeah. where you put the code out in the open, no one company controls it, everybody contributes, it's a meritocracy, yeah. you know, sort of a bring, bring your developers is the way you control it. Well, and when, now that open source has become so mainstream, I think there's an element that I'm watching is, okay, it might be, you know, the Democrats versus the Republicans or whatever we want analogy you want to use, you know, what's best for the customer ultimately is the end game, right? So in the pure coding world, yeah, show up with code. Code will always trump um, cash, as Mike Olson would say, I love that line, code trumps cash, meaning you can't buy leadership in yep. open source. I agree with Mike Olson on that. But business model also is an issue, right? The business outcome will determine it. So, you know, maybe the diversity of models might be just an evolutionary game. So that's kind of why I'm watching it closely because mm -hmm. it's certainly the bad tactics have all been seen before. We've you know, talked to Cloudera, Hortonworks, you guys, we've all seen the dirty tactics. We know what that looks like. Yep. And so it will be easy to spot those guys. So if it goes that way. Yep. Um, okay, final question for uh, Red Hat. What's the strategy? Share with the folks out there. Um, you guys are a leader in open source. You guys are the big uh, grand poobah, if you will, for open source. You've got a ton of experience as a company. A lot of chops, you guys have a hardened approach, 10 year SLAs plus on a lot of the enterprise stuff. It's super, super awesome. Took hard work to get there. Um, what's next? What's the strategy of Red Hat? Share the you know, strategy around the company, the plans, the code, the open source, quick summary and we'll wrap it up. Okay. Um, yeah, well so it's, it's kind of more of the same in a sense. From a big data perspective, 
we're all about open. Uh, we think that's where all the innovation has happened, as you mentioned. Uh, we think that's the right business model for, for the big data industry. So you'll continue to see us build open interfaces, publish all of our APIs, uh, be a player for, for every, you know, in the entire ecosystem, uh, and, and provide sort of modular solutions so our customers can plug together the way they want to plug them together. They don't have to use all of our products. They can use some of them, et cetera. So you'll see more of that. Uh, Obviously, agility is very important, and also um, providing the infrastructure that's very dynamic, very elastic, like we talked about. Uh, we think that's, that's OpenStack. Um, so you'll continue to see a lot more hard work there from Red Hat uh, and our partners and the ecosystem. Uh, and then finally, um, you know, as you've heard lots at the show, it's all about the application, the business value. The business value is all about drawing uh, analytics out of the day, you know, getting work, having analytics to work against the data to get the business value. Um, and so we're provide, you know, look for us to continue to work very hard on things like OpenShift uh, and our JBoss middleware uh, to provide platform as a service so that customers can use whatever uh, language they want to use uh, and develop in their, uh, in the tools that they want and yet do it dynamically and be able to deploy it very quickly. What about uh, Red Hat Summit? Any visibility on what's coming on the agenda for that? Is it too early to kind of uh, uh, tease out a little bit of data on that? Yeah, no, it'll be the same as are you, you know, what I just mentioned, right? It's going to be yeah. all about OpenStack. It'll be all about A lot about of DevOps. sessions, same deal. A lot of informational sessions. The cube will be there. Oh yeah. Uh, we'll be in Boston. Hopefully the snow will melt by then. <laughs> um, it was, uh, it was a, there was a report that said that in New York there was, um, um, they had the, the longest string of no murders in New York City in its history because of the cold weather. Yeah. And one of the comments was maybe because the bodies were frozen. Yeah. Um, but that, so the, the snow in Boston hopefully will be, will be melted by then, but yeah. we'll see. Great, Indeed. thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. As always, a great conversation here on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. We are live in, in Silicon Valley, day three coverage of Big Data SP. We'll be right back. <laughs>